Welcome to Computer Science 320, 2015 Winter 1, Midterm 1's Practice Problems. So we've finished reading the problem description, and now we're moving on to problem 1. Prove that for non-negative edge weights, the minimum spanning tree of a graph is a minimum spanning subgraph. Well, let's remember that a minimum spanning subgraph is a spanning subgraph, and it's the one whose total edge weight is smallest. So the first thing to do is to show that a minimum spanning tree is a minimum spanning subgraph. So what does it mean to be a minimum spanning subgraph? Well, the minimum spanning tree has to have a set of vertices equal to the original set, which it is, and it has to have a set of edges, which are a subset of the original set, which they are, that's part of the MST definition, and it has to be connected, and a tree is connected. So this is a minimum spanning, excuse me, this is a spanning subgraph. So one, and MST is a spanning subgraph because its vertices are all vertices of G, its edges, sorry about that, are a subset of G's, and it is connected. Okay, so it is a spanning subgraph. Is it the minimum spanning subgraph? Well, two, it is minimum among spanning subgraphs because, well, why is it minimum? Well, it said specifically that for non-negative edge weights, it's minimum. So let's think about this. Any subgraph is going to have a spanning tree. Any spanning subgraph is going to have a spanning tree as part of it. So let's start with that. Any spanning subgraph will contain a spanning tree. If it's not already a tree, we know it's spanning, so we can just run the minimum spanning tree algorithm on the spanning subgraph, and we'll get a spanning tree as a subgraph of the spanning subgraph. So it's got a spanning tree inside of it. That spanning tree cannot have cost any lower than the minimum spanning tree, because that's what the minimum spanning tree is. So it's a spanning tree with cost greater than or equal to the MSTs. Now, it's got this spanning tree inside of it with cost at least as great as the minimum spanning trees. So, well, what happens when we potentially add edges back in in order to get back to the spanning subgraph? Well, every edge we add, because we have non-negative edge weights, it's got at least zero weight. So adding that edge doesn't reduce the cost of that spanning tree. And because edges have non-negative weight, that is less than or equal to the cost of the spanning subgraph. And that finishes our proof right there. We've got the cost of the overall spanning subgraph. That's at least as large as the cost of the spanning tree inside of it. And that's at least as large as the minimum spanning trees. So the minimum spanning tree is actually the minimum spanning subgraph as well. Okay, that completes part one. Next, we'll move on to part two.